Welcome home, Miss Margin, Mr. Albright. How come you use the back stairs instead of the elevator? Shh, quiet. Okay, no one saw us come in. And you didn't see us either, Charlie. I uh, didn't? Oh, you see, Charlie, I'm still on my vacation. I've got another week to go. We don't want Mr. Honeywell to know we're here, because we're leaving again immediately. If he found out Dad was back in town, he'd make him go to work, even though we've still got a week coming. Are you with it? Yes, ma'am. If there's anything I dig, it's capital and labor relations. Ah, good boy. Now, I'm going around the corner to pick up some fishing equipment. Margie, you pack all the things that you're going to need for the mountains. Uh, oh, oh, I better go back down the stairs. Somebody might see me. Well, it's mighty nice of you to allow Francis and me to use Albright's apartment while we're in New York. You have no idea how Francis hates staying in hotels. Anything to keep a client happy, Mr. Withers. Stop, wait. You can't go in there, Mr. Honeywell. Why not? What are you babbling about, Charlie? Oh, you mean Mr. Albright's back from his vacation? Is he in there now? Well, sir, no, sir, he ain't in there now. Then what's the matter with you? I'll take full responsibility if that's what's bothering you. Say, maybe this boy could take a cab to your office and pick up Francis for me, huh? It's a good idea, but allow me. Here you are, Charlie. Just tell my secretary that Mr. Withers sent you and keep the change. Yes, sir, but, uh... Now, stop worrying. I'll explain everything to Mr. Albright when he gets back. Yes, sir. You and Francis should be very comfortable here. Oh, Francis will like this. Hates to be cramped up in those little hotel rooms. Plenty of space here, even a den, see? Just make yourself right at home, Mr. Withers. The place is yours. I hope all right some time on my next trip. I'd like to meet him. Thank him, first He'll be delighted to have been of service. Well, I'm going to run along now. And just let me know if there's anything you need. I'll be in touch with you as soon as I get Francis settled. Thanks again, Honeywell. No trouble at all. See you later. Right. you. What's this? What have you been doing? Robbing me of Poppin? Oh, oh, no, sir. I'm the maid. Marie's the name. The maid? Well, why on earth didn't you say so? Well, you startled me. Now, if, if you'll excuse me, sir. The hall. Sneaking out while Mr. Albright's away, is that it? <laughs> Taking advantage of the man who pays your salary. Well, we'll put a stop to that. Unpack that bag, Marie. You're staying right here. Staying here? Exactly. You can earn the money Mr. Albright pays you by taking care of his guest, me. But I... Don't argue, young woman. Or would you rather I called Mr. Honeywell and told him about your attitude? Mr. Honeywell? Oh, no, no, don't call him. I'll be a good girl. I mean, a, a good maid. Uh, yes, sir, at your service, sir. Well, that's better, Marie. Now, suppose you make me a pot of coffee. Yes, sir. Dig a pot of coffee coming right up. Okay, honey. Are you all packed? Marie! Who the devil is this? This? Oh, oh, you mean this? Well, this is the butler. Good old Brighton. Uh, What's going on here? This is Mr. Withers, our house guest. Uh, Mr. Honeywell sent him. He wants us to stay and take care of him. Uh, you tell him, Mr. Withers. Nonsense. Tell him yourself. Servants. Ha! <laughs> Marie Brighton, what's this all about? Mr. Withers is a client of Mr. Honeywell. He gave him our apartment to use, of all the nerve. Uh, client? Why didn't you tell him the truth? Why this maiden butler routine? 
I got trapped into it. He caught me sneaking out. I was trying to head you off so we could get out of town without Mr. Honeywell getting wise. You're not getting cheated out of your vacation if I have anything to do with it. So now I'm my own butler. This is a vacation? Well, we can't tell him the truth now, Dad. Besides, all we have to do is play along for a few minutes. We'll say we're going out to shop for dinner, then keep right on going. I'll leave a note for the Albright saying Marie and Brighton have quit. You know how servants feel about unexpected guests. Well, it might work okay. Now, come on, Brighton. Bottle it up good for the old boy. <laughs> Uh, begging your pardon, sir. Marie has explained everything. I, I trust you will forgive my unseemly conduct a few moments ago. So you decided to earn your salary, huh? Well, you can start by unpacking my bag. Uh, uh, very good, sir. I'll put your things in the master's bedroom. <laughs> and I'll prepare your coffee, sir. <laughs> I forgot to leave the contract for your signature. Not that I'm pressuring you, understand, but just in case you get an overwhelming impulse to sign today. Well, I'll look it over later. But don't rush off, Honeywell. Sit down. Marie is making some coffee. Oh, fine, fine. A good cup of coffee is always... Marie. Yes, and Brighton is unpacking my bag. Say, that vice president of yours does himself mighty well with the butler and maid. Marie, what's the matter? Excuse me, sir. Your luggage is unpacked. Shall I draw you your bath, Mr... Honeywell? What's the matter with you, Brighton? Have you lost your wits? He never had any to lose. Well, you see, sir, I, I didn't expect to see Mr. Honeywell here, sir. It took me quite by surprise. Uh, I don't see why you should, Brighton, old boy. Unless you have a guilty conscience about something. Have you, Bright Eyes? Mm? Uh, well, you see, sir, I... Uh, uh, that is... Uh, Brighton? I want to have a word with you and Marie, too. We must see that Mr. Withers is properly taken care of, mustn't we? Mr. Albright would want it that way, wouldn't he? Why, Mr. Honeywell, fancy meeting you here. You won't think it's so fancy when I get through with you. Now, what the blazes are you up to this time? Oh, it's not her fault, Mr. Honeywell. It was all a mistake. Yes, I, I couldn't help myself. Mr. Withers assumed I was the maid and... Assumed? Well, you might say I told him. In fact, you might as well. Anyway, he naturally thought Dad was the butler because what's a maid without a butler, I always say, and what's a home without a maid. And naturally, I wanted Mr. Withers to feel at home, so I... This isn't going to come out right, is it? You bet your sweet life it isn't. If Withers finds out you're the real all rights, he'll think he's doing business with a bunch of drooling idiots. And that's not just one man's opinion. Oh, Marjorie was only trying to protect me so that I could finish my vacation. You're going to have a permanent vacation unless you go through with what you started. He thinks you're a servant, so by Harry, you'll be servants. Me, Buttle? Now look at him, Mr. Honeywell. Now take it easy, Dad. How long will Mr. Withers be here? Just two days, but I wish it was years, so you two could sweat it out. Now get with it, Brighton. And Marie, you serve that coffee. I think I've got Brighton and Marie on the ball now. And if you don't get perfect service, just let me know, and I'll break his silly... Well, that is, uh, I'll discipline the fellow. I know how to handle servants. Don't pamper them. Make them whip for their money. You hear that, Brighton? Mr. Withers believes in an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Oh, yes, yes. I believe that is Mr. Albright's motto, too, sir. Oh, yes, Mr. Withers. It's a pity you can't meet him. Why, they say if it weren't for Mr. Albright, Honeywell and Todd would collapse. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I let my admiration for Mr. Albright run away with me sometimes. But then you do depend on him so much, don't you? Sugar, please. <laughs> oh, let me, Brighton. I love to see Mr. Honeywell get his lumps. Say, it's been some time since we sent that boy after Francis. I wonder what's keeping him. Francis? Who's Francis? Another house guest, Marie. 
Oh, you'll be delighted to meet Francis. <laughs> oh, no! Francis? Uh, Francis? Marie, I think you ought to give Francis Margie Albright's room. She's away, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind. <laughs> Francis, it'll be over in a minute. Well, you certainly have a way with dogs, Brighton. I've never seen Francis take to anyone the way he's taken to you. It was love at first sight. Don't fight it, Brighton. It's bigger than all of us. Well, when you get him dry, bring him to me. I've got a special ointment I applied to his coat immediately after his bath. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. <sighs> Okay, he's gone. Now, if we could just find a way to make Mr. Withers leave of his own accord. Hold the phone, I think I've got it. Now, Margie, you know we can't do anything to offend him. Bright and old boy, Miss Margie is coming home unexpectedly. Naturally, when she gets here, Mr. Withers will have to go to a hotel, right? Oh, for heaven's sake, he already knows you as Marie. You can't just change your name, you'd have to change your face. Remember the face I used to make when I was a kid with my lip turned under? He never recognized me. Well, if that face doesn't get rid of him, nothing will. Luncheon here for you and Francis, sir. Lou, where's Marie? Uh, this is her afternoon off, sir. Ah, someone at the door. Will you please excuse me, sir? <laughs> well, heaven to Betsy, this is a surprise. If it isn't Mistress Margie. Oh, it's good to be home, Brighton. I hated to leave Father, but I came down with this terrible... Oh, what a shame. I'll show you to your room. Oh, dear, I forgot. Your room is occupied. We have a house guest. A house guest? But Father didn't say anything about it. Oh, he didn't know. Uh, Mr. Honeywell installed him during your absence. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Withers, this is Miss Margie Albright. Oh, Mr. Blithers, how do you... <laughs> Bless you, my dear. I must apologize, but Mr. Honeywell assured me you folks wouldn't be back for another week. Oh, I wouldn't have returned so unexpectedly if I hadn't contracted this terrible... <laughs> oh, uh, Gesundheit. Uh, 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 this is Francis. Uh, uh, Francis, this is Miss Margie Albright. Uh, you have her bedroom. Oh, what a beautiful doggy. I know you'll be sorry to see her go, Brighton. He's such a dog lover. I hate to put you out, Mr. Dithers, but I simply must get to bed and nurse this dreadful... <laughs> cold. <laughs> Why, you poor dear. Brighton, take Francis' things and put them in Mr. Albright's room. Francis will share it with me. With you? But, but aren't you leaving? What? Do you think for a moment I'd leave a sick girl who needs someone to take care of her? But... Now, it won't be any trouble at all. I have a daughter about your age myself, and I've seen her through a lot worse things than a cold. But, but you'll get pneumonia from me. And what about Francis? You wouldn't want Francis to get the flu. Ah, now, don't you worry about Francis and me. We both had shots. Now, you better get to bed at once. Uh, but, 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 Take her luggage in, Brighton, and phone Marie. She'd be glad to give up her afternoon off when a Mr. Sneeds her. Hurry now. Come, come. Come. <laughs> That's it. Hurry, hurry. Come in. Withers just left for Honeywell's office. 
Oh, baby, we've been in messes before, but nothing like this. We've taken the wrong approach so far, that's all. We've been trying to get rid of Mr. Withers when Francis is the solution. Get rid of Francis, you get rid of Mr. Withers. Oh, that's a brilliant hunk of logic. Francis will be glad to leave if he's uncomfortable. And what, may I ask, would make him uncomfortable? Fleas. Fleas? Fleas, put two of them, a small army. But where are you going to get fleas in army-sized lots? I'm going to call Freddie Wilson and have him gather up some of the inmates of the pound, loaded with fleas. <laughs> Freddie, you're sure these dogs are full of fleas? Well, the man said so. There, does that answer your question? <laughs> uh, where do you want Francis? Put him right in front so the fleas can get a good shot at him. Uh, down, sit, down, 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 down. Here's some flea powder. Let's get started. Margie, you really think this is going to work? Of course it'll work. We squirt these dogs and the fleas take off on all runways. Where do they jump to? The first unoccupied dog, namely Francis. Then Mr. Withers takes his canine bulldozer and leaves for more sanitary surroundings. Now, come on. Okay, let him have it. <laughs> Is Francis scratching yet? No, but I am. Come on, Jeff. Come on. Watch where you're shooting, you idiot. Mr. Withers, you don't have to stay on in New York until Mr. Albright gets back from his vacation. It's a matter of wanting, not having to. I owe it to him for using his apartment. But uh, are you going to wait till he gets back before you even sign the contract? Exactly, a token of gratitude. And I shall suggest to him that he handle my account personally. <laughs> Brighton, what's the matter with you? I got fleas. <laughs> What's going on here? What are all these dogs doing here? And who are you? Uh, he, uh, he's Mr. Wilson, the pest control man. At the flea division, squirt gun operator, first class. He's a first class squirt, all right. Oh, look who's talking. Flea powder? I don't understand. Well, you see, Brighton took Francis for a walk in the park because he loves Francis, and all these dogs followed Brighton home because all dogs love Brighton, and, and they're all covered with fleas, and we called a flea expert, but too late. The apartment's infested, and you better get Francis out of here because he's going to get flea happy. Nonsense. Francis is immune from fleas. Immune? Oh, you mean Francis can't get fleas? Of course not. You remember I told you. I apply a special ointment to Francis' coat after his bath. It's a flea repellent. It completely repulses him. Then how about some for me? You're repulsive enough already. Now you get these mutts out of here, and that includes him. Do you realize that Mr. Withers is going to stay here until he meets Vernon Albright in person? Well, what are we going to do? We can't produce me when I'm already my own butler. There's only one thing to do, gentlemen. We've got to get someone to impersonate Dad. As Vernon Albright, I mean. We can put a beard or something on Freddie. No! Have that moron impersonate me? Why, that's not only fantastic, but it's ridiculous. For once in my life, I agree with you. Freddie Wilson is even a bigger moron than you are. Now you go and change out of that silly butler's outfit and meet me at my office. We've got to have a council of war. As much as I hate to admit it, Marge is right. We've got to get someone to impersonate me. That's the only way out. You mean hire an actor? 
Hmm, might work out. Hire an actor? Oh, Mr. Honeywell, it's lucky for you that you've got me to protect you. We can't hire an actor. Why, once he knew your secret, he'd have you at his mercy. He could even blackmail you. Ah, oh, George, you're right. Of course I'm right. The actor is out. Freddie Wilson is the only man for this job. Wilson, are you crazy? Uh, like a fox. Why, he wouldn't dare to take advantage of me. After all, <laughs> I'm Margie's father. Yes, so you are. But this is no time for me to bear a grudge. Okay, all right. Get Freddie on the phone. Why, Miss Margie, you must be really sick. You haven't touched a bite of your food. Oh, Margie, are you still asleep? I just want to be... Marie! Where's Margie? Here I am, Mr. Withers. I mean, Marie's in the bathroom. I mean... Well, Mr. Withers, I always say there's only one thing to do when you're caught red-handed. Admit it. But, Marie, I, I mean, Margie, I don't understand. You will. Come on, I'll make us a pot of coffee and give you all the gruesome details. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a wild one if I ever heard it. Oh, that's nothing to what we almost went for. I almost sold Dad and Mr. Honeywell on having Freddie impersonate Dad with a beard yet. A beard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this, fellas. There's nothing to it, Freddie. As soon as Withers accepts you as all right, make some excuse to get out, then I'll get him out and we're in the clear. And for heaven's sake, pull yourself together and try to act dignified. I'll go around the back way and put on my butler's outfit. You know, I may enjoy this at that. Yeah, sure, if I'm Mr. Albright, I can do anything I want. And he can't open his paper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, I do enjoy a good joke. And that was a Jim Dandy. Well, I can't say it wasn't any trouble, because it was. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, Mr. Withers. Mr. Albright's back from his vacation. Greetings, everyone. Home is the happy vagabond at last. Oh, no. Let's go along. Let's have some fun with him. Welcome home, Mr. Albright, sir. Well, 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 Marie, it's good to see you again. Just as pretty as ever. My, how I've missed you. <laughs> Sir, that's not in my contract. Well, quite a ladies' man, I see, Albright. Yes, for heaven's sakes, control yourself. I wish I could, but I can't. That's why I keep Marie around. As she grows older, I feel younger. <laughs> oh, just a moment, Albright. I want you to meet your other house guest. Marie, bring Francis in here, please. Well, gentlemen, shall we celebrate this happy occasion? Brighton? Brighton, where is that stupid butler? Are you called, sir? Yes. Bring us some refreshments, my good man, and some cigars. Or did you steal them all while I was away? Can't trust servants these days. Now then, Mr. Withers, I understand you'd like to sign a contract with my firm. Well, uh, Albright, I, I was thinking of it. Uh, Mr. Withers and I will take care of that later. I'm sure you want to freshen up, take a nap, or go to your club while we run down to the office. Nonsense, Phil. Fresh as a daisy. Let's get down to business, huh, Mr. Withers? Well, there are some conditions before I sign. Now, I'll be making two trips a year to New York, and I want to be sure that you'll be allowed to devote your full time to me and my account. <laughs> Hear that, Honeywell, old boy? At least there'll be two weeks out of the year that I won't have to pick up my unemployment check. <laughs> Born comic, all right, always clowning. <laughs> well, well, affectionate little thing, isn't he? Oh, Francis adores him, all right. And that brings me to one more condition, Honeywell. I'll sign that contract right now. If you'll talk all right here and let me bring Brighton home with me. What? Oh, I insist. It would break Francis' heart to leave him. But, but... Quiet, Brighton. It's a deal, Mr. Withers. He's all yours. Take him away. Oh, but, 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 Freddy! Uh, I, mean, I mean, Mr. Albright, you can't do this. Oh, oh Mr. Honeywell, please do something. Ha, 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 Well, Margie, shall we let him off the hook? Margie? You know? I had to tell him, Dad. And you're not mad? 
And you will sign? Why, of course, gentlemen. I haven't had so much fun in years. <laughs> the way he had you hopping around all right. Oh. <laughs>